What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to our page. Today we got a super exciting video to share with you guys today. We're going to be talking about stepping up your sneaker photography game. We're going to be pulling back the curtain and talking about all the little tips and tricks that you'll need to know to really up your photography game. Whether you're a customizer or just a sneaker collector, whether you're looking to sell a product or just get some cool shots for the gram, we're going to go over just about everything today. But instead of me giving you guys the tutorial, we had to call in the big guns today and we're bringing in the creative director here at DCF is my buddy Jason and we've been working together for over a year now. And I'm sure you guys have noticed because our photography and videography game here at TCF has just totally been taken to another level over the past year. And that's because now there's really truly a love and passion behind that. So let me go ahead and pass it over to my buddy Jason. What's up guys, I'm Jason. I'm here to help you guys better your secret photography, whether it's with the professional lighting equipment indoors, or we're gonna even go outside and help you guys get better outside shots too. So we're gonna take you guys through two different outdoor shots. One is literally where you can go dress right outside your house or any park or really any environment next to you or near you. And the other one is kind of going the extra mile and looking for a more fitting environment that fits with your shoe. Well, for those of you who want to go the extra mile and invest in some studio lighting equipment, we're going to give you guys the links to some equipment that we use that is high quality but budget friendly. So first we're going to head outside and show you guys some great sneaker photography tips with some natural lighting. The most ideal day would be where there's a bunch of clouds outside and the sun's not really showing through, where everything is just a nice gray tone. But as you can see from the video, we're, we don't really have that kind of weather right now. It's pretty nice outside, but we're just looking for some shade so we can go ahead and still get those nice shots. But it's it's super sunny outside so we're gonna go ahead and just work with what we got. So one of my favorite places to start with when it comes to shooting outdoors around my house is usually putting the shoe on top of the curve and giving the shoe that nice little tilt. The goal of giving a tilt to the shoe is to kind of give a viewer a different perspective than what they usually see on Instagram and these sneaker blogs where the shoe is parallel to the ground. So now that we have the shoe on the curve you can go ahead and get a bunch of different perspectives whether it's from hip level or chest level but the goal here is to give your audience a new perspective in which they haven't seen before which really makes a great photo so you want to go ahead and get low on the ground and that way you can get the object which is the shoe in focus and get a nice background which is nice and blurred out which is called bokeh. So go ahead and grab some extra photos because you never know maybe your first one isn't that great and it never hurts to grab some more. So now that we've gotten some shots right outside your house which everyone can get let's head out and find a more fitting environment that fits our shoes. As you can see from the video we're shooting a Bumblebee Transformers custom which I thought would have been sick to shoot in front of a yellow Camaro but unfortunately we don't know anyone with the yellow Camaro so the next best thing is to find some black pavement with some yellow lines that usually like a parking lot which fit the shoe pretty great. As you can see our location is a parking lot with some shade provided by the tree above us and we're only using about a square foot of pavement which goes to show that anybody can go ahead go look for the perfect scenery that fits your shoe. So in this scenario shooting from ground level isn't really the best choice. When you shoot from the ground level all you'd be capturing would be the soles of the shoes. So the most ideal shot would be to go from above and get a shot where the line goes directly between the shoes and it really frames the photo well. So now that we're all wrapped up on some outdoor sneaker photos, let's go ahead and head inside to show you guys some indoor lighting setup. So all that you'll need to really replicate my setup is a white backdrop with two stands, a couple photo lamps, two or threes is enough, and then also a tripod to hold your camera. So my setup is considerably bigger than what you'll need. You can get similar results from a tabletop setup. So what you're going to need to do first is to find some white or clear string which you could attach to the back tab of the shoe, or if you don't have a back tab of the shoe, you could always attach it to the top lace hole of the shoe. So usually with this kind of shot, I always ask Dylan to just step back as far as he can and just reach out with the string to make sure that none of his body parts are in there to make it easier to Photoshop just to string out later in the photo. So now that you have your camera on the tripod, you have your assistant helping you with the shot, go ahead and take some different perspectives of the shoe against the backdrop. Usually I go from the bottom left to give it like a nice upwards perspective. Sometimes you don't want to go through the struggle of dealing with the string or you don't have a partner. So another option to this would be to put yourself timer on, grab the shoe, put it on your hand and go ahead and take a shot. So I like to think that secret photography is 50-50 where 50% of it is done actually taking your photo and 50% of it is actually done editing your photo. So now that we've got all our photos together, everything's taken, let's go ahead and head to the computer where we can edit all these photos. So now that you have all your first photos, we're gonna go ahead and take it into Lightroom, which I prefer using when it comes to editing photos. So as you can see here, we got our good photo, which isn't the best, but it's good. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just start messing with the settings a little bit, change the temperature around. If it's underexposed, go ahead and expose it a little bit. The contrast usually brings out the little details, which are important, but don't 
overdo it because it just makes it look very cartoony. So now that we have fully edited this photo, you could see that my style is a little bit grungy and dark and whatnot. So find a style that really fits you the best in your photos. So even though our good photo looks great, let's go ahead and move on to our next photo, which will be from the ground view. So without the editing, you can already tell that it's already a better photo just because it has that nice bokeh, which is like the blurry background. And all of our details in the front of the shoe are all nice and sharp. The Autobots logo isn't as sharp, but that's only because it's closer to the back of the shoe. But that's alright, you can could, you could tell what it is. So now that we have all of our editing done, you could tell how much better a photo this is right now when I click the before and after. You can see the huge difference when you take your raw photos and put them into an editing program where you could really bring all the details, exposure, the clarity, you can really just enhance everything and make your photos 10 times better. Now that we have this photo side by side, we can definitely tell which photo tells the story of the shoe better along with giving the audience a brand new perspective. So now let's move on to the shots where we went and looked for a better environment to fit the shoes. So from what you can see, you can definitely tell that this photo taken from the ground level doesn't fit it at all just because of the way the shoes are positioned. So we're going to go ahead and just delete this photo because we're probably not going to use it anyways. So just go ahead and get rid of it. So right away from what I can tell from this photo, the left side is definitely darker than the right side. So you want to be careful about changing your light levels too much because you don't want your right side to be too overexposed compared to your left side where it's a little bit dark. So for a shot like this, I would put my contrast up a little bit higher than the one previous before because this is a shot from the top where the sunlight is hitting the shoe a lot more directly. And then I would drag my highlights a little bit down just to give the bumblebee a lot more detail because it was a little bit overexposed, but that's all right. Usually you don't have to do the most here photos. You could always just give it little small changes, which really make the shoes pop out more. For example, I changed the highlights just a little bit lower, brought out my shadows to make the bumblebee on the shoe pop out, which is the most important detail in this shot. So don't always try and make your background the most important part of it because your subject are your shoes and you always want that to be the main focus of your shot. So the way you edit your indoor shots versus how you edit your outdoor shots are two very completely different methods. Usually your indoor shots, depending what you're shooting, are going to be a lot more cooler. So if you want, you can bring up the temperature just a little bit to give the yellow back its yellow. So then you want to move into your exposures, your contrast, your highlights, because usually you'll be shooting a little bit underneath where you're not overexposing it. So that way later in post, you can go ahead and bring out those details that you weren't able to capture in the shot. Usually I want to make it seem that the glare from the flash isn't on the shoe to make it really just seem authentic and as if it's just, you know, a regular shot. Usually with wide angle lenses, you'll have this little vignette right here made in the corners. Which doesn't mean you did anything wrong, it's just the effect made by the lens. So right here under effects in the post crop vignetting, you can go ahead and increase it until we kind of just get rid of that vignette. So around 24 is good for me. And here's a quick before and after the photos. As you can see, it's very much brighter. The details are just popping. My yellows look nice and saturated. My metal panels right here look like it's actually metal. But there's only one thing wrong with this and you can still see it right here at the top if you zoom in that we still have the string attached to the back panel of the shoe so we're going to go ahead and take this into Photoshop. We can go ahead and teach you how to get rid of that too. So this step in the photo editing process is probably the quickest one by far. So you're going to take your photo once it's in Photoshop. You want to go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see where you're going to be editing. And this tool right here is going to be called the Spiculing Brush Tool. Just go ahead and just start brushing along the line right here and just like that it starts to disappear you don't want to go too much because then that happens you just go towards the edge just a little bit that's all you need to do for smaller tight spaces you want to go ahead and grab your phone stamp tool and just find a reference point right here which is usual usually right above where you're going to be painting and just start brushing that just a little bit you don't want to touch the shoe itself and then right here to the side just copy that right over just like that, just brush it off. So once you're done with your string above the shoe, you want to go ahead and grab your marquee tool. This isn't necessary, but I do it just to center the shoe and make it a little bit smaller. So if you have a box like this left over after you're done sizing it, you can go ahead and grab your quick selection tool right here on the side. Select all the way around it. Now that you have all your white selected, go ahead and right click and click on fill content aware right here. And it'll just grab the pixels around it, fill it up a little bit, make it look clean and 
really blended in well. After you fill the white box, you might have some lines in the corner around that just don't blend in well. So you can go ahead and use this tool, which is a healing brush tool. So like the reference point right here and just brush that in and that should fix everything for you. So, far. so now what you're left with is a shoe that looks like it's floating in midair and it's edited well so now this is ready to post on Instagram so like I said before editing your sneaker photos is just 50% of the actual process your 51st 50% is taking the photos now 50% of editing it so now that you have all that done you're ready to post it on whatever social media outlet you like If you have any questions about what we went through today go ahead and let us know in the comments we'll get back to you guys as soon as we can we'd love to see how some of these tips helped you in your photography so if you want go ahead and tag us in your photos so we can keep up with you guys so if you haven't yet go ahead and like the video subscribe all that good stuff and we'll see you guys later